Hello everybody! In this video we continue covering appendicular skeleton and we will talk about upper extremities. So here I have all the bones that make our upper extremity, uh, your arm, your forearm and your hand. And we're gonna start with humerus, right? So that this bone is humerus. And for humerus, according to your list, you need to know the following parts at the head of the humerus. And head of the humerus forms a joint with the scapula, right? So here is scapula, here head of the humerus, right? And um, over here, we form the joint, right? Like this. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I think you cannot see it. So, a head of the humerus and glenoid cavity. Then we have a neck. Um, neck, um, we have anatomical neck. An anatomical neck would just be this part, you know, over here. I think that's how it shows, right? Goes just around. Uh, and there is a surgical neck. Surgical neck is this pretty narrow part. Right? And this is where the bone is likely to fracture. So that's a surgical neck over here. Okay, so head, neck. Then we have body of the humerus or shaft. Right, that's a part, that's a shaft. Um, also, over here, you have like two bony structure. Let's see if you guys can see it, right? So, this is called greater tubercle, and this is called lesser tubercle. I'm trying to just see. Let me move it a little bit this way. Okay, so it can be at the end of my desk, right? So this one is greater turbicle, and this is lesser turbicle, right? And uh, in your list, you can see the muscles, the major muscles that attach to this part. Over here, we have intertubercular groove, right there. Okay, so that was the proximal end with the head, neck, greater tubercle, lesser tubercle, and intertubercular, intertubercular groove. Inter means between, so it's between two tubercles. So that's a proximal. On the distal end, you would see like lots of bony structure over here, right? So this part and this part are called epicondyles. And because this is the medial part, this is this will be medial epicondyle, and this one over here is lateral epicondyle. Now this part look like kind of like a T. See, if you use your imagination, it does look like a T. And this is called trochlea, and this round part is called capitulum. Right, so trochlea attaches to the ulna and capitulum attaches to the radius. Then uh, we also have on the posterior side this big depression. And oh my God, that's really bad, big, right? So it's olecranon fossa. Oh my God, big one, olecranon fossa. And um, on the anterior side over here, we have coronoid fossa, and next to it is radial fossa. Right, so again, this is our epicondyles, medial and lateral epicondyles, trochlea, capitulum, coronoid fossa, radial fossa, and Alecranon fossa on the posterior side. Okay, so that was humerus. Next two bones we are looking at will be radius and ulna. 
And the first thing, make sure you guys know which one is Una and which one is the radius. Una has this U over here. So that's your clue. That's Una. And radius look like a nail. Like a nail. So we're going to start with Una. So here's the head of the Una. Right? So that's the head. Like with the big nose. <laughs> right? So that's the head. And head of the ulna is distal, actually. Not proximal, but a distal part of the ulna. So that's a head. And this big nose over here, this is called styloid process of the ulna. So head and styloid process. Right? And um, over here, we have these two processes. This is like a big one. This is a lacrinon process. This is what you can touch. When you touch your elbow, you're touching a lacrinon process. And this process over here is called coronoid process. And what we have between them is called trochlea notch. Um, there is a mnemonic over here to remember, and mnemonic, mnemonic is over the counter. Like you have over-the-counter medication, over-the-counter. So over start with O, so it's a lacronon. V start with T, so it's a trochlear notch. And counter start with C, so it's a coronoid process. And that's our humerus, right? And remember, in the humerus, we have this trochlea. Right, that's a trochlea, so trochlea fit inside the trochlea notch. So we have trochlea notch and trochlea, so they form a joint. That's a part of your elbow joint, and we will talk about it um, later. And look at the posterior view. So this is our alacranon fossa, right? And alacranon process of the ulna, so you can see how alacranon process Feeds inside the alacranon fossa. And, um, yeah, okay. So that's good. Next bone will be radius. So that's the radius. Oh, yeah, one more thing I forgot. And there is here, right, this part. This is called radial notch. Because ulna also forms joint with the radius. And this is how they would fit. See the radial notch and the head of the radius. Right? Forming radial ulnar joint. This is proximal radial ulna. And then we will have distal. So let me put them together like this. So this I have radial notch. And this is radial ulnar joint. That is proximal, and over here, I would have distal radial ulna joint. Right, so here's the radius. And radius also has this styloid process. Like ulna has styloid process, remember? Like a big nose on the head, but head of the radius is this one. This is the proximal part. So head of the radius styloid process of the radius, um, radial tuberosity, that is this bump here, right, okay, see, that's a radial tuberosity, and this is the attachment of biceps brachii, and ulna notch is right here, right, this is where we have head of the ulna attached. Okay, so that was humerus, ulna, and radius. And the last part are actually your hand. All right, and we have carpal bones. So here, carpal bones, right here. We have eight of them in two rows, four and four, so total eight. Then we have metacarpal bones. Five, starting with the thumb, one, two, three, four, five, 
five metacarpal bones, and then we have phalanges, right, right here. So for carpal bones, you need to memorize them, right? So this one over here, right? So this one is called scaphoid, right? Next one over here will be lunate. Then this bone over here, like this one, this is triquetral, and right on the top of it is pisiform. Okay, so again, this big one is scaphoid, and scaphoid means a, a sheep. I think, not, uh, well, not not the. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry for my accent. But this is like um, when you go on a cruise, that type of shape. This is lunate, triquetral, and pisiform, like a little green pea. Pisiform. So that's the proximal row and distal row start with this one. And this is trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hemate. Hemate has like this little bony part going right up. That's a hemate. Now for metacarpal bones, uh, we just use the numbers 1 through 5 and it's Roman numbers. And this will be MT, like metacarpal, right? Uh, I'm sorry, MC, metacarpal, MC. MT will be metatarsal, MC, metacarpal, MC1, MC2, MC3, MC4, and MC5. And for phalanges, we have proximal row, we have middle row, and we have distal uh, row, right? So we have proximal phalanx over here. Over here, proximal phalanx, this is middle phalanx, and this is distal phalanx, and only the thumb has proximal and distal, and middle is absent. Right, so, um, so if you need to identify, let's say, a phalanx, let's say um, I want you to identify this one, right, then you're going to, uh, name it this way. This is proximal phalanx of metacarpal 3. Right? Or you can say of the third digit. This would be, or let's, let's do this one. This would be middle phalanx of metacarpal 2, of MC2. Right? So middle phalanx of MC2. Proximal phalanx of MC1, right? Okay, so um, that's it for appendicular skeleton upper extremities. And thank you for watching, right? And see you next time.